Anyway, so what we have here is uh, world is not safe now. Yes, that is true, Toku. I safer. Uh, it's safer behind the screen. Uh, well, not really, because we are in the in a in a digital world, Steve. Uh, I think we are we are safer off screen and offline than uh, on screen. But that's that's just my view. Anyway, uh, so all this is what we call a data breach. Uh, basically, there was a, a some sort of breach, some sort of incident within the organization, and because of that. Uh, either information was stolen. In this case, they stole it. They accessed that information and held it for ransom. That is why we call it ransomware. Uh, you know, just like somebody will take uh, somebody, you know, these Mexican, have you seen all these Netflix films where Mexican cartels, they take one of your family members and they say, you know, we, we hold them for ransom. It's the same thing they're doing with your data. So what is data? Data could be your, your invoices. Data could be your customer information. Data could be your purchase orders, anything. Anything that's important to a company. So the attackers will identify that this is important information or what we say operational information. And they will take that for hostage. So this is the, uh, we've seen for the last two, three years, ransomware has been one of the top uh, threats, uh, cybersecurity wise in the globe, because it's, it's something very lucrative. And another reason is uh, people don't realize Bitcoin prices have been going up for the last two, three years now. So I think it started at about $10,000, $20,000. Now it's, I don't know, crazy amount, somewhere like $48,000, $50,000 a Bitcoin. Uh, so that's why even this for this colonial pipeline hack, they were paid, I think, seven Bitcoin or something like that. Uh, so that roughly translates to about $5 million. Um, so that's that's another incentive for criminals, cyber criminals, especially because uh, they, since the price of Bitcoin goes up, uh, and they they usually the ransom is paid via Bitcoin. Uh, it's it's you know it's in their interest to uh, keep on doing this type of activity. But anyway, a breach uh, is a incident where information is stolen, taken from a system without the knowledge or authorization of the system's owner. Well, this is important the knowledge and authorization so it is not about the activities they do once they're in the system the fact is that it is done by the knowledge and the authorization why this is important i'll discuss in a little bit more because the if the if a company provides the authorization then uh, you know it can be an exercise it's because we do it now my my day job uh, is to talk to companies and we discuss with them how they, we can simulate attacks, uh, especially with banks, uh, telcos, and big conglomerates. So then we have the authorization to carry out an attack. So we will carry out a mock attack and we will tell them this is on, on, on Saturday at 11.30 uh, p.m. we will begin the attack and at 1 a.m. the attack will end. And, and so the systems are prepared, their, their parameter is prepared, the defenses are prepared, and then we'll run it. But the important word here is we have the authorization. But here, the cyber criminal doesn't have authorization. They just go for their criminal activity without the knowledge and consent of the company. Small company or large companies may suffer data breaches. As you can see, largest companies suffer data breaches. NASA suffers data breaches. The Pentagon suffers data breaches. So it's not something unique to any company. Uh, it's not something uh, unique to any organization or any industry. It can affect everyone. It's like COVID. It doesn't differentiate. You can't just say it's uh, because I'm big or small. It, uh, it affects everyone equally. Uh, the stolen data may be sensitive, proprietary, confidential. That's true. Then that even for the colonial pipeline hack, this is the imp important aspect. It might be proprietary information, confidential information. In colonial's case, it was operational information. Uh, also, it can be something like credit card numbers for supermarkets. Sometime back, Target, uh, the supermarket chain got hacked. And uh, that's, uh, I think, so many credit card information you got leaked. Yes. Right. So then that is what is known as a data breach. Do you have any questions here? Or shall I move on to the next slide? 
right no questions i'm going to move on excellent so why is why why is data breach is important why what are they how does that impact an organization but i think what really happens is let's let's think about guys even this colonial pipeline how can a consumer trust colonial now to deliver the service or the goods they want which is fuel for their car and that's why people panic buy they didn't panic buy because colonial had a system issue and they were under ransomware attack they panic but started panic buying because the confidence and the trust was destroyed and suddenly they realized panic set in and and they have to go ahead with this because the trust was lost you see the company issued a statement they said we're working on it and within 5 days we'll try to get it back up and running but the trust was lost because the trust was lost people decided to hold and that's what happened and and uh, like the us government officials said in the video they saw a spike in the demand so this is what happens to companies see any company from target to i mean last week we spoke about a, a little company called ashley madison you guys remember that uh, so the moment the information is leaked or the moment some sort of important company information proprietary information personal information or any any information for that matter is leaked or disrupted or made unavailable then the main factor the trust that is placed in a company is lost and then brand reputation is lost uh, you know the goodwill they have is lost so that costs money see that's that's what you miss here it's not it's not only even for colonial it's not only the five days that they lost because they couldn't access their systems they lost partners they've lost suppliers they've lost the trust in the government as government as a regulator now probably will ask them difficult questions so that costs money if it's if it's a supermarket chain and suddenly you've got attacked you have to maybe run another nice ad campaign to make sure you tell people we're back online nothing's wrong come back with us and that costs money imagine that comes in your marketing budget that doesn't have to do anything with it but then that's the cost of that breach then uh, you know you might have to deal with a regulator colonial might have a lot of problems with the us government now and that will cost money of course while this is happening they'll have to get experts they'll have to get cyber security companies to come look at all this do assessments we call it digital forensics uh, i have done it as well where a ransomware situation happens in a company and they call us they put a sos saying come please help us help us decrypt this uh, so then we have to you know those days we used to fly in the experts now you know we we make sure they join remotely but that's money for an organization they have to spend they have to spend consultants time there are very expensive tools we have to use to to you know make sure we can decrypt some of that data it's a lot of cost so that those all those elements add up and then pr and then of course they might have to they might face lawsuits from companies uh, other companies suppliers customers uh, i remember target place faced a class action lawsuit uh, because their the credit card information got hacked in 2018 or 2019 so you know then again you'd have to spend money on that legal case that's nothing to do with the breach that's nothing to do with uh, it you might say but end of the day as a organization the impact is huge and that's why breaches are important because that's why we just shouldn't look at it and this is the the mistake a lot of companies make they look at something like cyber security information security data breaches as an it problem as oh that's the it managers issue that's the it division issue uh, that that it has to handle but the moment they do that uh, you know you become like colonial where you will suffer huge financial loss because you are not ahead of the curve you are not uh, looking at a cyber threat or a cyber attack in in a holistic way you are just looking at it as a it problem and this is you know i've lost track guys of how many times this has happened 
to big companies, multinational companies, locally large conglomerates, SMEs, telcos, banks, day in, day out, day in, day out. We keep telling them like a mantra, you know, this is not an IT problem. You need to look at it from CEO point of view, the chairman, the board of directors, they need to look at it. But end of the day, what happens is like Colonial, they, they outsource the problem to a manager or, or an employee. And then uh, something like this happens. So, you know, that, that is what it is. And here, this chart gives you an idea of, of some of the threat vectors that come. Is it hacking, device lost, unintended disclosure? So I'll just touch on that in the next slide. So some of the, some of the ways in which breaches happen, some of the ways in which uh, breaches can be done across all the industries is some of, some of the points that we've discussed here. One is, like I say, insider leaks, uh, which is, you know, somebody is just cheesed off. Do, do you all have any examples? I know some of you all are working. You know, do you all feel some days that you come back from work and you just really cheesed off? And, you know, you just want to badmouth your company. I'm, I'm not saying it's the ethical thing or the right thing to do, but some people do that. And then some people take it to the next level where, where you know, they leak company information. They leak uh, companies' IT information, operational information. And then this is be used by criminals or themselves for that matter. Sometimes, you know, in Sri Lanka where I'm based, uh, I was called to assist in an investigation where a bank employee, I was very uh, clever about this, a bank employee had siphoned money off of people's accounts. Mm -hmm. uh, but he was very clever because it was only a couple of cents out of each account, something you will miss. So when you look at your statement, no one will notice that a couple of cents is missing. But he had done that for several years. And what had happened is he had, uh, he had accumulated millions and millions of rupees, which is our local currency. And until the banks realized something was amiss uh, in the audit reports, and then only they, we realized that he had, he had uh, used some kind of uh, software code to take a certain shave off a certain amount of cents out of each and every individual's uh, bank accounts. Obviously, the, the individual customer won't miss it. Uh, the bank won't realize it from its audit uh, trails, but that's what he did. And uh, like I said, so it's, it's, it was not an outsider. It was not a cyber criminal or a gang or a nation state. It, it was an employee end of the day. And most of the time, most data breaches, when you look at it, when we conduct investigations also, uh, we realize that it is sometimes an employee that is responsible, which is why we say when we, when we do these things, uh, you must get uh, forensics involved, you must get experts involved, because then we can try, start looking at the evidence as well. Uh, Another way is payment card frauds. As, you, as I mentioned uh, previously, in the dark web, your credit card number with the CVC and your personal information, that block. So let's say it's, uh, it's John's, John's name, credit card number, CVC, maybe his personal email, that block will go for about $50 individually. So, what happens then is, so imagine one, one person's information about $50, then if you, if you hack and get 100 records, you know, that's $5,000. And if, if you hack a little more, more and more and more and more money. So then this is the incentive for cyber criminals. So then this is why they go after targets. They go after supermarket chains because that is a place where they know for a fact there's a lot of credit card information being stored. So payment card fraud is, is, a, is a huge incentive for criminals to come after an organization. Um, another way things happen, loss or theft. Loss or theft, not in cyberspace. Actually, someone steals your laptop. Someone steals your device. And because of that, uh, suddenly you have a situation where company sensitive information is in the hands of a third party. And because of that, uh, companies at risk. So this has happened. This where devices have been stolen. In fact, right now I'm I'm working with a manufacturing company. Uh, some of its employees. There was a change of management. This new management came in, 
And in that time, two of the SAP servers were stolen. Physical servers were stolen. And uh, because of that, they had lost the material inventory when the management change took, took uh, place. So literally they're flying blind at the moment because right now they don't know, they, they had to do a manual check of the inventory, but then they were, there's nothing for them to check it against because of course the old rec records have been displaced or lost. So that is another situation where they actually take laptops, computers, files, whatever. Unintended disclosure. Again, I have an experience with a bank where a, a bank marketing executive uh, wanted to send an internal email with all of the bank's top 500 clients. These are the top tier clients. And basically they had an Excel sheet of all the client's information, bank account numbers, emails, contact numbers, addresses, everything the nic here in sri lanka we have something called the nic which is the national id card number everything all the pii's the personally identified information and um, he was supposed to send this to another marketing executive he by mistake send it to all the people on that list so basically all outsiders and i think a few journalists also it was done mistakenly but basically the bank suffered a huge uh, problem and, and then you know they were pulled up by sri lanka central bank and we had to consult them we had to you know see what the disclosure was how bad it was uh, did did it get to the you know bad guys or there was a huge uh, process that we had to do but long story short unintended disclosure i mean you talked to the guy he said no it, it was a genuine mistake and and we did a background search it wasn't malicious uh, you know, it wasn't anything like that, but genuinely, genuinely had made a mistake. So what are you going to do? Uh, and of course, unknown. Some, sometimes some companies get attacked, organizations get attacked, and they don't even know why. And I believe last week we spoke about hacktivism. John, if you remember? Steve, uh, if you remember? And this is, uh, this is part of that, where sometimes you're hacked for basically reasons you don't even understand, because you know you were you are citing with some cause or you're associated with some cause a good example is i remember when edward snowden was arrested and wikileaks was shut down and i remember paypal said they were no longer going to accept credit uh, credit card uh, you know donations for wikileaks there was a hacking group called anonymous they decided to hack paypal now this was clearly not because they were going after PayPal for commercial reasons. This was not an employee. This was not uh, for criminal activity. They were just going after PayPal because, you know, they were helping Edward Snowden get caught or they were shut. They were helping WikiLeaks get shut down. So, uh, you know, people, people look at it in that way and this is this is something that organizations fail to understand because sometimes they will be attacked and sometimes they will be targeted uh, for reasons completely devoid of their own understanding but they still have to be ready for that you can't just say and, and this is something a lot of companies say yeah yeah but you know who's going to attack me who is not going to attack you that's the question and and one thing when we discuss with cop organizations or when we have a chat with companies what I tell them is assume a breach. Assume you are hacked right now. Because if you go with that mentality, you go with that understanding, um, you know, at least your outlook will be a little better than trying to think, okay, I'll never get hacked. Or let me try to stop them when they try to hack me because you never know. Uh, generally, the, I think the, they've done a study from the time of breach, and we get to get to the breach life cycle as well. But from the time of breach to the time they take, you realize you're under attack and they've taken something or you're on, on ransomware and the time they exit the system, generally it's an eight month window. Average, guys, it could be more, it could be less, eight months. 
bad guys in your network, in your systems for eight months, you don't even know about it. So when companies like Colonial try to fix the problem now, it's really not going to be that productive because those bad guys probably were there much, 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 much earlier than they would have ever thought. Gentlemen, I've been talking for a little too long now. What about you? Any questions? Any, uh, any observations of your own? Ladies, I haven't heard from you all as well. No, no questions from our side. Thank you, Jade. Steve, no, no responses from you. Nice. No questions. Okay, very good. Right, so next we move on to the phases of a data breach. And I'll tell you at the end of this why we are doing this and why we're looking at this. Um, if you can put direct your attention to this image over here, you will see there are three stages. You know, some researchers or some cybersecurity consultants uh, break this down into five, some say seven. Uh, you guys are taking a very, uh, uh, you know, 30,000 feet view at it. So I don't want to complicate it for you. Uh, I want you to look at it from a very simple way. That is why I thought maybe this three stage would be the best for you to understand. Because my intention out of all this is not to bore you. Even when this module is done, and even as you go about your lives every day, when you hear something, when you see something related to cybersecurity, these learnings, these teachings should come back to you and think, ah, okay, I know what they're talking about. Or when your companies or your organizations uh, that you work for, and there is a problem, you should be able to step up and say, yeah, you know what? I think this is what's happening. Or I think, you know, uh, these are the learnings I've done. So maybe this is what I feel is going on. So that, that's my intention because cybersecurity is, is something that should be not only for techies, it should be for everyone. And that's my intention when I teach. So in, with that, uh, that's why it's broken down into three, research, stage attack, and exfiltrate. So we look at research, which is number one. Research is the attacker having picked a target looks for a weakness to exploit. Now, what is a weakness? Weakness could be employee. Weakness could be the system. Weakness could be the network. And now weakness could be sometimes the tools they use. We remember uh, last year, there was a big hack called the solar winds hack. Now solar winds was a, unfortunately a, a tool that we use for incident response in cybersecurity. So there were hundreds and hundreds of companies that were using this. Microsoft used SolarWinds. And it was embarrassing because because of that, I remember Outlook had issues because they were using SolarWinds to check their incident responses. So it could be anything. It could be an employee. It could be a network. It could be a tool. It could be a vendor. And, and I remember, if you remember last week, I spoke about Beyonce's emails getting hacked and them going after the supplier who are based in Sri Lanka called MAS Holdings. So that completely unrelated, but then they went after the supply chain of that individual. It's called a supply chain hack, where they keep going back in a supply chain to see what entity they can target. Uh, the same thing they did for, for vaccines. You know, they went after cold storage uh, providers, because they knew that companies like Pfizer need cold storage. So they started, cyber criminals started attacking uh, cold storage suppliers. And, and this is a trend we see. Uh, some companies, some biotech companies that supply uh, raw materials for the vaccines to be made. Those companies have seen 100, 200, 300% spike in their attacks because they realized these companies are important in the supply chain. So it happens. So basically, a cyber criminal will do its research. Now this, like it mentioned here, long hours of research, 
planning, uh, you know, stalking, looking at employees, looking at employees' social media, uh, you know, looking at their behaviors, their offline behaviors. It entails a long hours of reconnaissance. Just like in your mind, imagine if I tell, let's say, Steve, Steve, you need to, I show you a house and say, you know, you need to break into that house. Now, what are you going to do? You are going to first and, and you know, you're not given a choice in the matter because of some reason or the other. And you're told, you know, break into a house. What's the first thing you'll do? You will look at the house. You will say, okay, fine. I'm going to have to do this. I will look at the house. I will see who comes in, who comes out. How many people are in the house? How many visitors do they get a day? Uh, do they have any dogs? Do they have CCTV cameras? Do they have roller gates? Do they have a card system to enter into the house? Or is it just a normal key? Who has the keys? What are the times people go to work and come back? Reconnaissance, research. You're looking, you're looking. You, you guys have seen bank mo heist movies, right? What do they do? The bad guys first do a lot of research before they hit the bank. And it's the same thing for cyber criminals. They do a lot of research, look into organizations, some, sometimes things you may not even realize. Um, I spoke to a, another cyber criminal who has now turned into a cybersecurity researcher. He said, you know, I used to, when I'm targeting a company, I used to go dumpster diving. I used to go through the company's trash it's because companies throw away in pieces of information they may, they may not realize is important or vital. So that happens. So that is part of how research happens. The next part. Now, mind you, between research, number one, and stage attack, it could take months, sometimes years even, depending on how important the organization is. Uh, if you're planning for a big attack, that is how it is. Or it could be a matter of days. It doesn't matter. Depends on the organization, depends on the individual, depends on the criminal entity or, or anyone else that's trying to carry out the attack. Then you have the stage attack. Now you've, you've done your reconnaissance. You've looked at the house. You've understood who is coming in, who is coming out. Uh, then you realize, okay, maybe at noon, uh, the owners are, owner is out at work. Uh, the dog is not there. The cameras are switched on, switched off rather. You know, you've identified a window for you to stage your attack or stage your infiltration into it. This is where you get the sexy bit in the bank heist movies also where they carry out the plan uh, seamlessly. But you realize when you watch the film, they had a lot of planning involved. So they know the target's weakness, the organization's weakness. And, uh, you know, because of that, they either launch a network-based attack, either a DDoS or a ransomware or for a tool or some sort of way they've launched it, uh, you know, basically going after the IT infrastructure of an organization. So, for example, we said an SQL in injection attack, uh, a vulnerability exploit, exploit, a session hijacking. So, I mean, there could be several technical ways they could exploit, but they could use a look at the network and organization's infrastructure, digital infrastructure, and say, okay, this is the weak spot. This is the soft spot we're going after. Maybe a mobile app. Um, there are instances of telcos. The mobile app has a uh, API. That API goes back to their CRM. That CRM goes back to their billing system. So they will just go after the mobile app. And when the app is compromised, they can get into the organization. So that's another example of a network-based attack. Or the next one is a social attack. Social attack is basically you identify the CEO. You stalk his Instagram. You stalk his uh, Facebook. You stalk his Twitter. You realize, okay, so you know he's he's into crypto, like Elon Musk, and and uh, you know you maybe message him and say, oh by the way, this is my crypto wallet. Uh, why don't you check it out or something like that? And most likely he'll click on that, and his machine, his device his laptop, his phone might get compromised. And through that, you might get access to the organization. So that's another way we, we can uh, stage the attack. So that, this is just a very logical classification. If one is network-based, one is social. Anyone has any questions up to now?
because I, I feel I'm like talking to myself. So I'm going to take a quick break and see if uh, you guys understood what I'm saying. Mr. John, are you with me? Steve? Uh, unless everyone has fallen asleep. Ah, Steve is there. Excellent. Right. From the deathly silence, either you have completely understood what I've said or you do not understand at all. I'm assuming it's it's the first one. <laughs> yes. Excellent, excellent. Right. Okay, so everybody's still here. Any any questions you have up to now? The reconnaissance or the research. Now we are in stage attack. So then we go on to number three, exfiltrate. Once inside the network, uh, the attacker is free to do whatever they want. So they will, some guys will go after the data, like we see at Colonial. Uh, they'll encrypt that data and they will say, you know what, that's a ransom there. Some guys will just delete that data and say, you know what, uh, because you you know dropped my favorite uh, footballer i am deleting all your crm details we never know uh, or you know they might they might steal the information oh there's a bunch of ton of credit card information here let me just take that and let it let me just sell it in the dark web so different motivations of different individuals but uh, you know the 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 posture is the same they they're in the system they can do whatever you want. Similarly, imagine you break into the house now, you have got in, you have staged your attack, you have got into the house, uh, in the house. Now you know, okay, upstairs, master bedroom, there is a safe, let me go after the safe. So like that. Is somebody joining or? Right, I'm here I understand, okay. So that's, that's sort of the example. And this is the, in the bank example, this is the big bank heist. They have taken the money and they're running out. And then the security comes in, they're trying to shoot you or the employee switches the, the, the silent alarm on, but doesn't matter, they're on their way out. So exfiltrate is that. They've come, they're going after the target, they're going after the prize, they've taken it and they're exiting the building. Uh, think of it that way, exfiltrate is there are bad guys are exiting the building. And that is the three stages that we see. So the research, staged attack, and the exfiltrate. Now, all these three steps combined, we call them APTs, advanced persistent threats. So advanced persistent threat, your, since your course outline also mentions how they use different tools, what are the methods they use. This is this is what it is. Uh, somebody's speaker is on. Ah, thank you. So this is what it is. These three steps combined is what we call an APT. Research, stage attack, and exfiltrate. So this is, this is basically, by APT, what we mean is a, a threat actor, a nation state, uh, a group, like we saw of dark side, this is what they do day in, day out. They, they identify a target, they go after the target. And all this can be outsourced also, which I, which I mentioned earlier. If you feel you don't want to do all this, you don't want to go have the hassle of doing all this, uh, you can hire somebody to do it. Similarly, you, you don't want to rob the bank. I mean, you know, it's beneath you. You hire a bunch of criminals and you say, you know what? Um, big bank over there, I want it robbed. Uh, you get to give half the cash, you give half the cash to me, and that's how they do it. So it doesn't matter how they do it, but the process is still the same. Breaking into a bank, the process is the same. Breaking into a house, the process is the same. And in our cybersecurity, the phases of the breach, still the same. The motivations are different. The financial incentives are different. The people doing it is different, but these are always the steps of the APT and the phases of the data breach. Is it clear for everyone? Do you have any questions?
No? No questions from my side. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Right. So I'm going to show you guys. Thank you, Ratu. Right. This is a, I'm going to show you two tools, two uh, instances of real life examples. So this was called the low orbit ion cannon. I think they've taken it out of um, Star Trek. Any Star Trek fans here? No? It's a little old school. But uh, I think it's something out of Star Trek. I'm not a Star Trek fan myself. I'm more of a Star Wars fan. So um, low orbit ion cannon. It's, it's, this is actually a tool that the bad guys used or hackers used. Um, what, what this tool does is, if you can see here, uh, it gives you a URL, an IP address. And basically, this just overwhelms that particular URL and IP. So this is essentially a DDoS uh, tool. So this was the main tool that I, you remember I mentioned uh, a hacking group called Anonymous used to go after PayPal. There, there is, a, I think, Operation Freedom was, was, it, what was it called? But uh, anyway, this was the tool that they used. Sorry, now see, see, this tool is actually a testing tool that uh, researchers used, but then attackers or hackers have used this and turned it into a malicious tool. Uh, they, the, it's written in C++. It was initially developed by this company. And uh, you know this is now public. It's, it's in public domain. You can even search for this tool. Don't go to download it, please. I urge you not to because um, what happens is if you try to download this now, you know you get a malware with it, and bad guys will take over your computer for other activities. But this was a tool that they used. So essentially, this tool you could say how many packets. I don't know if you can see that, uh, but you could tell how many packets you want to send. And essentially, just using this tool, you could down a website. Uh, and if 100 people or 200 people were using this simultaneously and at, uh, targeting one website, you could, uh, if they don't have the necessary protections, you could actually bring down any website. Uh, so this tool is, is a very interesting tool. Uh, now, of course, uh, organizations have tools themselves, like Cloudflare, and technologies they use to mitigate this type of uh, attacks and tools. But this is an example. Now, for example, let's say you can use something like this to create a distraction. So if you are going after a bank, you could use this tool to disrupt the bank's main website. So the attention of the IT teams will be drawn to that incident. Then you could have infiltrated into the network you have gotten your data customer information client information and exited because as far as the it teams are concerned uh, they're having a issue with the website but actually your your plan was something much different so this is this is a tool this is a real life tool this tool is uh, now obsolete but uh, i just wanted you to give you a little knowledge of how these things look like because it's just no point just discussing now you have an idea in your mind what some of these tools look like. The other one is dark side. Now dark side, I thought I'll discuss dark side because uh, you know it's there in the news. So <clears throat> they too have um, what we discussed, initial compromise, established foothold, escalate privileges without being too technical. The number one, this, this area here is their research. So they will research suspected password attacks on the parameter infrastructure, meaning they'll try to guess the password. They'll go to the employee login pages from the web and see if they can brute force their way. They'll try to identify who are, who are the employees from LinkedIn and try to follow them on social media and see if they can, there is a weakness there. And then here, what we've mentioned is CVE, and you see a bunch of numbers here. Now CVEs, are common vulnerability exposures. Now, those are a directory of known vulnerabilities organizations face in their tool or their softwares. And some of these cyber criminals use these to gain entry. Because if you have not patched your system, 
not updated your uh, uh, for the latest software. Sometimes a CVE, an old CVE, would be still useful. Think of it this way. You have a lock in your houses. And the key is what you use, but also somebody has done something, copied that key, and they have a key as well. Now, you, if you haven't changed the locks and you still go on saying, no, it's fine. I'm sure nobody you know, took, uh, made a copy of those keys. There is a chance for a bad guy to come in, use, that, use a duplicate key and get into your house. So that is what CVEs are. Sometimes, if you're not using the latest software, latest version, and this is why a lot of security researchers and all these companies keep telling you, update your latest systems, keep your systems updated with the latest software, make sure that the new softwares are available, please download them. How many times you've heard this, right? You know, when the, when the OS, mobile OS version, the latest one is available, please update it because you bad guys may use old CVEs to get through to your system. Old keys, you haven't changed the locks, they might come in. And also malicious emails with the Google Drive leaks. Now, this is something a lot of Russian hackers use. Uh, they'll target employees within an organization. They'll send you a phishing email uh, to see if they can gain entry. So all this is research, this ash color area, and then establish a foothold. So they use different tools for that. I don't want to get into it, but all of this is research. Then these last three is either stage attack or exfiltrate. Now, also, as you can see, these guys use TeamWeaver. Um, if you've heard of TeamWeaver, that's a tool uh, IT support teams use. So they use that TeamWeaver uh, to look at other employees' machines or important employees' machines. So once they're in the network, they can move laterally within the network to see where they can, what they can steal, what they can do. This is what I mentioned before, just because a bad guy gets into the system, he won't right away go for the kill. He will stay in the background and keep watching. And you can see here legitimate credentials. They might in fact go after IT support division or IT division to understand actual credentials of the username and passwords of people. So they can use those to gain system access into a point of sale system, CRM system or anything like that. So that's uh, this is just an example of this is a, a real cyber crime enterprise, dark side. You heard it in the news. This is the agent, the, the, the criminal agency that's involved. This is their playbook. We call them that criminal playbook. So literally, this is what they use. So they, they use all these tools for reconnaissance to complete the mission that is the exfiltrate path. They use this. And, and here you can see dark side ransomware deployment. That is the ransomware tool that was used for Colonial Pipeline. And they have different tools that they themselves have made. That is why sometimes it's difficult to track these things. Criminal enterprises themselves like dark side have made their own tools. So they're not generally available. They themselves made it. it's proprietary and you have to come to them to use it. It's like Microsoft Word. Now, if you want to use a word processing application, you use, you have to go to Microsoft and get Microsoft Word. Of course, there are alternatives, but you want to use Word, you have to go to Word. It's same with cybercrime. You need to use dark sides ransomware. You have to go to dark side and use their ransomware tool. But that is how it is. And this gives you a good example of what we discussed previously of all these th three stages. This is a real world example of how these three stages are.